I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Simone Meany, CEO at Elliptic. Founded in 2013, Elliptic pioneered the use of blockchain analytics for financial crime compliance. To learn more, visit elliptic.co. Evolution Equity TV is brought to you by Evolution Equity Partners, an international venture capital investor partnering with exceptional entrepreneurs to develop market-leading cybersecurity and enterprise software companies. To learn more about Evolution Equity Partners, visit evolutionequity.com. Welcome, Simone. Great to have you with us today. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Simone, to start off, give us the backstory on Elliptic, how it was started up, and maybe some of the big picture milestones leading up to where the company is today. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Elliptic is actually, we're celebrating our 10th birthday this year. So really important milestone in the company's history. We were founded 10 years ago by three really amazing founders who are still very much a big part of Elliptic today, James, Tom, and Adam, who really sort of fell in love with the idea of Bitcoin, because it really was just Bitcoin then. Uh, we talk much more about a, a more diverse ecosystem of crypto assets today, but 10 years ago, it was all about Bitcoin. And they were really excited about this idea of decentralized programmable um, money and wanted to just jump in feet first. They didn't necessarily know exactly what they were going to build, but they knew they wanted to be part of, of, of building this new uh, financial ecosystem. And so actually their first venture in crypto was to build and run an institutional custody business. So we started off as a custodian. Um, not many people know that about Elliptic. And in the process of running that custodian, we wanted to make sure that we were being really um, compliant with money laundering regimes, even though there weren't that many regulations in crypto back in that time. We wanted to make sure that as we were accepting client funds, we, we weren't going to be accepting funds from any illicit sources. So we wanted to have um, screening technology in place that would allow us to detect whether a bad actor was potentially trying to use our custodian for, for money laundering purposes. And of course, at that time, no one was doing this. And so even though we went to the market to try to find a, a vendor that could do this, we couldn't find anyone. So we ended up building it ourselves. Very quickly, other participants in the early Bitcoin ecosystem were coming to us saying, we need this screening technology too. Can we use it? And so really that was the moment where uh, we went fully into crypto data intelligence uh, and we have been involved in that ever since. Although Richard uh, Seawald at Evolution Equity Partners uh, made an introduction and that's how we formally met you, uh, I've been following the company, uh, our media has, for uh, longer than that. You show up in the media and in a lot of different media properties frequently, even to the extent that they'll pick up your blog sometimes. So that's a compliment. You're doing a great job. But they wrote in the blog about ransomware trends in the UK, which is it's just off the charts. And it is here in the US and the rest of the world. And you know, here we are more than a decade in talking about ransomware, uh, fighting ransomware, and it just doesn't seem to get any better. How concerned are you about that? Yeah, it's a great question and very concerned. I think we should all continue to be concerned about this. Uh, it, 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 it's something that targets not only private sector businesses, but also in the public sector, whether it's healthcare agencies. Uh, most recently, there have been a number of stories in the UK where police forces have been targeted. Folks might be aware of a very recent issue uh, with a third party supplier to Greater Manchester Police here in the UK that has caused quite a lot of concern. Um, I think the fact that um, there's no real requirement for organizations to report ransom payments, it does increase the difficulty of understanding the true scale of the problem. Making that even more complicated is the fact that so many of the cyber criminals involved in this particular type of uh, activity are generally based in unco uncooperative jurisdictions like Russia. So that makes it very difficult for law enforcement to, uh, to really prosecute the perpetrators. But having said that, I think just kind of put maybe a bit more of a positive spin on it. Um, there are certainly ways that law enforcement have been able to successfully disrupt uh, some of these uh, gangs behind these ransomware attacks. And certainly 
cryptocurrency uh, tracking plays its part as well by helping law enforcement agents really uh, try to uncover their the money trail essentially you know and that's really the the beauty of uh, crypto based uh, transactions where they're on the blockchain so they are traceable they are immutable uh, and it's it's completely transparent which provides really critical intelligence into those law enforcement investigations to identify and disrupt these ransomware gangs. Simone, on the uh, topic of crypto, it's also unfortunately, as is anything digital, uh, hackable. Just recently, Coinex was uh, hacked. Uh, I believe it was $54 million. But I read in Decrypt, and I saw this in a few other medias, and it was reported by Elliptic, that North Korea's Lazarus Group has stolen $240 million in crypto in just about 100 days. And that, that's just that one group, right? I mean, that, that's a big number. Yeah, the, the numbers are pretty astounding and concerning for sure. Uh, and that $240 million number is actually not even including the Coinex hack. So that covers um, what was stolen from Atomic Wallet, from Coinspaid, uh, from Alphapo, and also from Stake.com. And then obviously you add Coinex on top of that. Um, so it has been uh, escalating for sure. It's uh, certainly a big national security issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, if ultimately the Coinex hack is attributed to the Lazarus group, which we believe that it should be just based on uh, the um, the activity involved in the laundering of those funds that overlapped with uh, the laundering processes that uh, they used in the stake.com hack, then that number would be closer to $310 million um, this summer. Right. Well, look, we can't avoid talking about, you know, these hacks. You know, we need awareness, but it's definitely not all doom and gloom. I think we're doing a great job as an industry fighting back. Uh, Elliptic in particular had a very interesting announcement. I mean, it seems like you've, you've had a string of these. You know, we've been following the company up, but what you're doing with ChatGPT is really, really interesting. So maybe you can uh, speak to that. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm really excited about this and what it can do to assist our customers who are really fighting the good fight on the front lines of this. You know, that our job is to make their jobs easier and make them more effective at detecting and disrupting these types of criminal activities. Uh, and, you know, we've been deploying AI in our products for, for some time. And, you know, one of the um, most common ways that we've been doing this is uh, to help essentially fingerprint common money laundering typologies in our products. So what that means is identifying behaviors that you would commonly see, for example, the Lazarus Group using in order to launder their funds in an automated way. So anything we can do to make our, our customers' uh, ability to, to trace these funds more effective, more efficient, is something that um, is really core to how we work in Elliptic. And so through these new behavioral risk detection techniques, uh, where we can automatically detect peeling chains, for example, or we can automatically detect layering, it really speeds up the investigation process. And it also removes potential for making mistakes because where you have a manual process, it's of course open to human error. And so anything we can do to speed that up and, and remove that scope for error is really important. So as I said, deploying those behavioral risk detection fingerprinting techniques into both our monitoring and our investigation tools has been really important. And then beyond that, we've used it internally. So it can be really powerful for internal productivity. So again, how do we make our teams even more successful and powerful? Well, we've deployed a, a fully kind of air-gapped chat GPT bot internally, as well as equipping the engineering teams with uh, approved coding assistance. Uh, and then um, just to kind of round that out, another, uh, another way that we're using it that's, that's really new and hopefully our customers are starting to see this is we're using it um, to support with our customer support processes. So again, just to remove the friction out of the process where a customer might need support from us, We've got a chat GPT powered um, customer support bot called Ellie, um, who, uh, who's available in all of our products. 
Now, do you worry at all, Simone, about the flip side of the coin, how uh, chat, GPT, AI in general uh, can be weaponizing cyber criminals? All phases of money laundering uh, have existed over time. It's it's a, an arms race. It's a cat and mouse race. And, you know, generative AI is is one of the frontiers in that. Um, there will always be new technologies that are weaponized by criminals. I mean, they are very often the early adopters uh, and, and will put these technologies through their paces. So it does push the boundaries, uh, but it's not anything new in, in the, the likes of Elliptic and others who work on the front lines of uh, cybersecurity are very used to making sure that we are hot on the, the tails of criminals that are weaponizing new technologies in this way. So I'd like to know about your partner program because you really can't scale in our industry, uh, especially you know not as an independent company in, unless you're a tech giant, unless you have partners. Some of your partners are in fact the, the tech giants, and then uh, you know you have some really interesting niche players. So tell us a little bit about you know who those partners are and what what they actually do. First and foremost, we're a data company. You know we think of ourselves as a data intelligence company. Sometimes the best way of putting our data and our intelligence into the hands of the most people that can benefit from it is to work with and through partners as well. And so we kind of think of ourselves uh, a little bit as the oil that goes through the pipes. And so we want to make sure that we're working with folks that are, are building and laying down those, those pipes. So that might be folks that were um, in the traditional kind of financial services compliance space, um, such as LexisNexis or Affinitiv that are already providing fantastic compliance infrastructure to the uh, traditional financial services ecosystem and that then the crypto analytics and intelligence piece is another part of that data set. It might also be that more in the crypto native space um, where we're partnered with other case management and workflow providers so that again our data feeds into, um, into a bigger picture. I think what's really important to take away is that crypto intelligence is so often just one part of the whole story. And so it's, it's, for us, it's always thinking about how do we enable our, our end users to easily take our data and look at it alongside all lots, lots of other data that they have got access to so that they can, they can have a complete picture. So before we let you go, Simone, I want to ask you about uh, one other type of partner, and that would be one of your VCs, Evolution Equity Partners. How, how important is it to find the right partners, and, and how did you find Evolution, or how did they find you? I think from my perspective, investors are so much more than the capital that they bring to the table, and finding a partner where you have really good alignment, uh, you have... Um, you're, you're, you're really uh, strongly kind of connected when it comes to the mission of the company, uh, the, the problem that we're trying to solve. And I think that we found that when we started talking to Evolution, um, they um, have always been and, and continue to be real leaders in the cyber space and have really strong conviction and understanding around uh, the problem uh, uh, landscape and then get really excited about companies like ours that where we can come and help solve some of those problems. So we felt that, that we had that great alignment um, right from the beginning. And then, of course, because they are so focused and great at, at investing in cyber security companies, it means that we become part of this family, this network straight away where um, they can put us into that network, we can build great relationships with kind of the companies that are highly adjacent to ours, which helps us grow and learn um, really quickly as well. Well, we're following you. We've learned a lot about crypto crime and crypto security from you and from your company. And we'll continue to do that, Simone. And I hope you'll come back on with us in early 2024 and uh, give us an update. I'm sure there will be plenty to talk about. It was uh, great to be here. Thanks so much. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Evolution Equity TV is sponsored by Evolution Equity Partners, an international venture capital investor partnering with exceptional entrepreneurs to develop market-leading cybersecurity and enterprise software companies. Visit evolutionequity.com to learn more. You can keep up with all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.